Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. I finally got to play this thing, the new Czechoslovakian Tier 8 Premium TD that you guys are grinding the Queen of the Night campaign for, and I thought I'd do a video for you. Before you slap down some money, I'll give you my no BS opinion. First of all, let's disclose exactly how I have this thing set up, because this is the maximum amazing setup that you could possibly have, pretty much. I've got a uh, bounty upgraded turbo, uh, bond optics, bond gun rammer, gun rammer directive, food, okay? And before we start the gameplay, let's look in the garage and see what kind of crew I have. Uh, number one, beat me to the garage. Make it so. Beep, beep. Here we are in the garage. Okay, so guys, keep in mind, this is what you're going to be viewing, okay? I've got, like, uh, amazing equipment on here. Uh, a bounty uh, upgraded turbo, okay? Which gives me plus five kilometers uh, per hour top speed. I'm uh, bond vents, bond rammer with a rammer directive, running food. And I have a fully trained crew. For example, uh, one key thing here is the driver. Uh, these skills are necessary. Off-road driving, smooth ride, and especially uh, clutch braking. Because I found that this thing had terrible traverse. Uh, and it, had, um, it bleeds off speed when you turn. So even with the, all the crew skills and, and everything, I still considered putting on... Uh, improved uh, rotation, improved rotation mechanism because of, because of the traverse. But I, I I didn't want that didn't work out. I needed the turbo and I needed the view range and I needed the DPM. So keep in mind that it's uh, what you're viewing is with this maximum uh, loadout here. Now, uh, with the the special turbo, you know I'm up at uh, 60 kilometers an hour top speed, and I think before I put that on I was at like 54, but I would never go 54 because of terrain resistance and, or just taking so long to get to top speed. It just wasn't fast enough. It wasn't as advertised because of, uh, you know, soft stats. So uh, the other thing, the other thing I should show you is when you get your uh, field modifications here, this one here, I, I had to change because originally I, let me move my head so you can read it there. Originally I had used uh, this one here. Uh, which gave me plus five percent to hull traverse uh, because the thing has bad traverse but that was uh, it, it didn't work because you get better hull traverse but then minus 15 percent to maintaining speed when crossing all terrain types and that just made it behave like a pig so i had to change that and put this one on here reinforced suspension which gave you know decreases my hull traverse i gotta live with that but it gives me plus 15 percent to maintaining speed when crossing all types of terrain this thing really slows down uh, when you're on uh, bad terrain so i had to use that so i got full field mods full uh everything and um just keep that in mind now uh, the the maximum or pretty much the best concealment you're going to get this is my sheriff's account so it, I do have a camo paint on here, but you don't put it on in the garage. It's a wargaming thing. I get it when I'm in the battle because it's a sheriff's account and all the sheriffs look the same. Uh, I'm at 31% concealment, 5.78 after firing, which is not that good. 18% uh, concealment on the, mo on the move. And if you shoot on the move, 3% concealment. That, th those are not very good numbers. There's some medium tanks with better numbers than that. So this is not a T67 on steroids like the t67 has much better concealment numbers than that and it's fighting against tier fives that have poor view range so it's invisible uh this thing here is fighting tier eights nines and tens that have much better view range and you have fairly poor concealment i guess what you could do you could uh you know if you want to take off the turbo maybe or the or the optics and if you put low noise muffler on here uh probably the best concealment you can get it to is uh, with the low noise muffler, full con uh, camo crew, running food. Maybe you could put a camo directive in there. Can, is there a camo directive for crew uh, multiple cover or whatever? Let's see. If you if you if you want to try and be invisible, what's the best you could get it to? Um, Thirty-seven percent concealment. Still only six point nine after firing. Twenty-four percent on the move. Now, that, that's you're not a. a 
This is much worse than say the SU-130PM. And there's some medium tanks uh, that have this. So keep that in mind. You're not invisible, okay? You don't have great concealment. Let's go back and watch the game. So with that in mind, I'm gonna show you the best game that I had, okay? I played uh, probably 20 games and I did not average very well in this tank. This game went uh, about as good as I could hope, mainly because there's some ingredients here. Number one, uh, my team wasn't that good. Number two, the enemy team wasn't that good. <laughs> Number three, it wasn't a small postage stamp size uh, map where everyone could detect each other immediately. Uh, number three, or number four, are we on number four? What's number four? I got lucky, number four. <laughs> and number five, I guess I, in, in all seriousness, this is one of the, uh, you know, a map like this is what, what works perfectly. When you have a, an open map uh, with long, light sight, uh, long lines of sight, you have a scout that actually does something like that ELC. You have a team that actually detects some of the enemies and uh, you can move around the battlefield and reposition and shoot enemy Muppets, okay? So let's uh, go. With this super turbo, with the, the new bounty turbo upgraded, this thing can go 59, which is still, it's okay. 59 is good, 59 is good. But remember, uh, there's some tier 10 heavy tanks that can go faster than 59, like the IS-7. You know, so you're gonna try to keep up with an IS-7. An IS-7 can go 59.5. If an IS-7 puts turbo, he's over 60, so. You, know, you need the turbo. But look at this, this is, when you have Muppets, you know, when there's Muppets in your sights, and that, you know, that was a, a bad shot. Well, what, what, what are they going to do? <laughs> they're driving in the open. They think they're brawling and they're getting sniped by me. Look at the view range circles on the map. You see the white circle here? That's the maximum detection rate. They were outside that white circle. So I have no uh, hope, or they have no hope of uh, detecting me, which is perfect, right? Uh, just a little bit about uh, concealment, because I think that's what makes this thing balanced and not overpowered it's not overpowered it's definitely not overpowered uh, you can get yourself in trouble so easily with this and th this is the thing so like I've heard some people say uh, in, in some of the reviews that I watched before I played it uh, this is a t67 on steroids and uh, you know it, it kind of looks like a t7 you kind of play it like a t7 but it's not a t67 on steroids a t67 at tier 6 no a tier 5 a t67 is tier 5 can have with the right equipment like 45 46 percent concealment and 11 12 percent concealment after firing okay at tier five so imagine that you got 11 12 percent concealment after firing you got 45 percent concealment stationary you got over 30 percent concealment on the move fighting against tier fives that typically have view range in the like the 300 350 you're invisible Okay, you're an invisible death by a thousand cuts tank. Now this tank has less concealment. I think this with the kind of the, the most, I don't have uh, the muffler thing. What is it called? The, the, the bounty, the, the low noise muffler. That would give me another 6% uh, on the move and stationary. But uh, I think I'm at about, what, what, what was it in the garage? It was like, 5% concealment after firing, it was less than 40, it was in the, what was the number? We just looked in the garage, you guys know what the number was, it was a lot less than the T67, right? So, and I'm fighting uh, many times versus tier 9s and 10s, tanks that can have over 500 meters of view range, um, when they're fully equipped with optics and have good crew, so, you know, you take a, a light tank or a medium tank, <coughs> a tier 9 and 10 with over 500 meters <coughs> excuse me 500 meters of view range and I have 5% concealment after firing I'm detected at the maximum range you have to bush yourself you have to put your enemies <coughs> outside this white circle right? to be sure to not get detected or you have to be sure that you're, you're shooting a tank that has very poor view range but even uh, at tier 9 and 10 even tanks that don't have great view range you know, some Muppet might be packing Binox. <laughs> you have to be very careful. You'll, you, what I'm saying is, in the 20 games I played, I got detected a lot. 
uh, in positions that I wouldn't normally get detected, say, with a uh, SU-130 PM. SU-130 PM is invisible compared to this thing, okay? So this is a uh, death by a thousand cuts, but you're going to get detected a lot. And that's what I thought when I first looked at the stats. It's, you, you just, if you get detected, you're, you're dead. Uh, so you have to be able to play the game, um, kind of what you're viewing here, moving around the battlefield, looking for the different lines of, uh, of, of sight, looking for the different angles you can shoot people from at long range. Okay, forget about what the war game you put in their video that this is a beast and you can move in close and play it like a media attack. You can, you can, but if you start getting focused, uh, it, it's very dead. You, you got to really be careful uh, when you do that, okay? It's typically not going to work. But uh, here, I know there's no one ready to shoot me, so I, I finished that guy off. Constantly moving around the battlefield, constantly trying to find... Uh, where do I get an angle to shoot that guy? How do I approach this guy? You know, where can I uh, position myself so that I can shoot and he's not uh, ready for me? Uh, and, and that's what you got to do. Now here I know my teammate's going to die, so I'm just going to come up here and try and save him. Can I save him? Yes. And he says, thank you. You're welcome. Now this is, on this map, yeah, sure, it worked, but do you want me to show you the three or four games that I played on Himmelsdorf, Ruenberg, and Ensk? Two or three games each on those maps? You know, it's tough to make it work. You're on Ensk, uh, pretty much the, the battle starts, and everyone has, you're in a tier 10 game, and everyone has view range to the other side. Where do you go? You know, it's... You're not going to have a game like this, guaranteed. Or maybe if you're super Unicom, you might, but it's tough. Uh, or maybe if you're lucky, or the enemies are Muppets, or you know all of the above. It, it's very difficult. And I don't know where that shot went. I guess it, you know, whatever. But now there's a Budosk that shoots me without aiming. Now, this is why you. Oh, I got to talk about the gun handling. That's right. Ah, thank you, Budosk. The Budosk has horrible gun stats, you know, like almost a four second aim time. Snap, he shoots me, because that's what the Burask does. This tank here, um, uh, it, despite what the stats say, you know, they say 1.3 second aim time, uh, 0.26 dispersion, you think, wow, that's amazing. And uh, uh, what I found is, you have to, what, what 1.3 second aim time means is that uh, that's the time, oh, oh, run! That's the amount of time it takes to shrink your aim circle by 60%. Okay? And so, it all depends where you start shrinking it from. Alright? Oh, I just took one up the ass, but it hit my track. It all depends where you start shrinking it from. So, what I noticed with this tank is, when you're moving forward or back, when you're traversing, or when you're traversing your turret, all three of those things, um, impose penalties on your aim circle. Your aim circle blooms when you move, when you traverse, when you traverse your turret, and when you fire your gun. But those three movements, this thing has pretty bad um, penalties. So if you're moving, traversing your turret, turn, stop like this, and then just start aiming, your aim circle's big. So after 1.3 seconds, uh, it, it hasn't settled down so that you can snap a shot or, or take a good shot. So what you gotta do with this tank is get into a position or if you're approaching an enemy, uh, turn your turret towards where the enemy is, drives uh, towards him like you're gonna poke a rock here, poke around the rock, turn the turret to where the enemy is, stop your hull, stop your hull traverse, stop your motion, then those penalties go to zero. Now your aim circle is small, right? Now all I'm doing is moving my turret a little bit to just make an adjustment on the shot. Then your aim time, 1.3, you're 60% you're smaller of something that's already tiny like this and it's it's no problem but if you're moving around uh coming around a corner uh turning your tank turning your turret uh you're gonna miss a lot okay and you're gonna say i, I don't believe that 1.3 second aim time but you, you just gotta understand how it works and you gotta try and limit the amount of penalties uh that are put on your uh, aim circle size which is hull movement hull traverse uh, and turret traverse. You gotta um, manage those, okay? 
Especially when you're poking corners or poking around if you're in a city. Anyways, what's going on here? How did I do? Did I showcase the DPM? Did I show the, the shell velocity and the DPM? The shell velocity is not that great. But overall, what do I think? Uh, it's fun. But it's going to have a, what do you call it, a high skill ceiling. If you don't know what you're doing, you're going to hate this thing. Okay, because you're, gonna, you're a glass cannon with not very much concealment. If you know what you're doing and you know where the uh, good positions are on the map, you're going to love this thing. And now I'm just going to take this guy out. No problem and show how much of a unicorn I am. Come on, come on, come to Papa. Come on, come ah! on. The Super Hellcat shot me up the ass. Victory, though. Victory. So, guys, um, you know, what do I think? And that was an ace tanker game, but, you know, who cares about the stats? And it, it made, uh, it, it makes credits just like anything else. It makes uh, decent credits because you don't have to really shoot uh, premium ammo because you have a uh, high pen on your regular shot, 277 pen. Uh, it's a little monster in the right circumstances, but it's surely not overpowered uh, in other circumstances. So buyer beware, know what you're getting into, okay, before you just... Uh, uh, you watch some of these uh, uh, videos on YouTube and everyone talks about how it's fantastic, it's overpowered, it's going to break the game, you have to have it. Now, you don't have to have it, but uh, if, you're a, if you're a good player and you understand map positioning, you're going to love this thing if you're in the right situation. Are you still going to get trolled uh, if you get a bad map or uh, if you get detected? You know, if there's someone with Commander's Vision System and they, you're in your favorite bush but it doesn't work, you know, sayonara, baby. Um, so just uh, be careful. You're not gonna. You're not invincible. You're not a T67 on steroids. You're a Czechoslovakian tier eight uh, TD that's carefully balanced. I think. I think it's balanced, and um, that's all I got for you. Okay, guys. Uh, I'll catch you on the next one.